Hello, and thank you for joining us today for our master control presentation. We are going to be talking about 2023 trends in life sciences in the quality space. Today we have Patricia Santos Sarau. She's a director of product management at Master Control, and she's going to be taking us through some of the exciting stuff that we think is going to be happening in this coming year. Patricia, thanks Jennifer for your for the introduction. Um, as Jennifer mentioned, my name is Patricia Santos Sarau. I'm a director of product management. In today's session, we're going to be discussing what the 2023 life sciences quality trends are and give you a little bit of insight into the impact those trends may have on your business and in your organization. Uh, for starters, the key takeaways we hope you take from today's session is understanding and learning about some of those the current quality industry trends. We want you to discover some advanced um, solutions, uh, software solutions, which we are going to give you some previews of, and uh, some of those solutions that we'll discuss today may have not been available in the past or have evolved over time and with the maturity of technology and give you some uh, tips and recommendations on how that technology can be used um, to get you better prepared for these quality uh, enhancements. Um, so what do some of these trends mean to you? You may be asking yourself, why are trends important and why should I be concerned with these trends uh, and do these trends um, impact me? Unlike fashion trends or social media trends, these trends in quality really are evolving and are going to impact your day-to-day -day business. And they mean the difference oftentimes between thriving in your industry against your com competitors or even struggling or going out of business at times if quality becomes an issue for your uh, organization. Uh, the quality trends uh, often comes from, from various sources. Um, we'll see emerging trends that may come from uh, in. Uh, Things that are happening in the world today, as we all saw in recent years with uh, the pandemic or product recalls, they may emerge through reaction to um, regulatory agencies conducting their oversight differently in new ways, or even how new technology and best practices are influencing uh, these trends in quality. So we'll talk a little bit about the different influences and how that is impacting those quality trends. Um, as the old saying goes, change is a constant. So the only constant in life is change. And with change, oftentimes, even if it's for the better, it does tend to disrupt business or cause some effect in, on your business. And we want to talk about some of the ways you can uh, minimize that disruption within your industry. Um, companies want to, of course, run lean and agile, and they want to increase their efficiency and cost savings. So we'll talk a little bit about how they can do that and how these changes can be less daunting on your organization. Also, we'll talk a little bit about the regulators' um, desires to uh, be more a quality-driven uh, organization and, and provide quality-centric oversight. And they are looking for companies such as yours to um, have in place ways to mitigate those disruptions. We're all aware of issues that occurred during the pandemic with drug shortages and baby formula shortages and supply chain issues. So the FDA and other regulators are looking for industry to really be self-regulating when it comes to ensuring that they can minimize um, disruptions. And we'll talk about how the quality management aspects of um, the industry uh, are maturing and how different technologies can help you um, get to that uh, desired outcome. Um, so next we'll talk, so we're gonna talk about three primary trends today. One is, as we saw, uh, many of us in our day-to-day -day life, we saw how the pandemic impacted our need to go remote and the regulatory agencies are no exception. We saw how the pandemic caused regulators to shift the way they do inspections and oversight to a more dyna uh, a more remote um, methodology. Uh, we'll talk about the also the quality management maturity initiative that the FDA has recently uh, launched and how that's going to impact your business in the coming years. And then lastly, we'll talk about how uh, we are witnessing a revolution in technology with what is being uh, termed as the industry 4.0 and how technology is being embedded into day-to-day -day processes where 
Um, things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, predictive analytics, and robotics are playing a part and even blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and human world. So first, starting with the first trend, let's talk a little bit about the um, remote inspection. Um, we've seen, as I mentioned, during the pandemic, uh, there was an in international impact on regulatory agencies uh, taking on this approach to um, remote inspections, so much so that during, uh, right, actually during the, the, the height of uh, these remote inspections, there was a working group that was uh, put together um, with various representatives from global regulatory agencies, and they formed what was called the International Coalition of Medicines Regulatory Authorities or as an, as an acronym, ICMRA, for those of you who are interested in, in searching up this uh, working group, they also released a report that assessed how different regulatory agencies shifted their oversight from on-site to remote. And what they found is that although they don't see uh, remote inspections being done um, across the board and, and, and eliminating on-site um, inspections, they did see a value in doing these remote inspections and foresee that they will be doing those remote, remote inspections more frequently um, in order to uh, minimize risk and to really uh, empower them to, to have greater oversight. Some of the questions you may want to ask yourself as an organization is, does your organization have the technology in place to open the virtual doors to your business? and provide access to documentation, to processes, and even facilities. Um, there are some organizations as we speak that are looking at different ways to implement technology, even such as drones, to provide regulators the ability to conduct manufacturing facility tours as part of their inspections, and also companies that are implementing electronic um, solutions for what commonly was done in paper. A perfect example of that would be electronic batch records. They're looking to eliminate the use of paper to provide a more um, dynamic way of sharing information around their manufacturing process with those regulators. So that's one of the first trends. Um, the second one we'll talk about is when there are those findings, we obviously anticipate and, and, and agencies expect them to be fixed and ensure that we're uh, addressing that. So to speak to that, um, the as I mentioned earlier in, in, in the slide deck, in, in the presentation, um, I talked about how the FDA um, recently initiated, uh, started an initiative called the Quality Management Maturity Initiative, where they are looking to use a rating system, rating system to uh, promote uh, companies being more uh, thorough and more advanced in their quality, man their use of their quality management system. The FDA has proposed this voluntary uh, QMM rating program for pharmaceutical manufacturers, which would require a collaborative and transparent partnership with the FDA, industry, and other stakeholders. Um, as they stated in their website, if you search quality uh, management um, maturity, you will see that there's a white paper and a couple of uh, talking points to that, where in the website, the FDA talks about how they have formed a multidisciplinary, multi-center working group to facilitate the development of this QMM rating program. Um, this is a working group that is developing a framework to object, uh, objectively assess and rate uh, companies, different manufacturing sites and quality uh, maturity through the integration of interactive site assessments and relevant intelligence pertaining to that site state of quality. And in development with the framework, FDA is considering standardizing those assessment tools, policy approaches, industry initiatives, transparency, and communications. And this is an initiative being um, uh, fronted by the uh, CEDAR, the Center for uh, Drug Evaluation and Research Division of um, F FDA. So the third um, trend that I want to speak to is how is it possible to predict and prevent disruption within your organization? And artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to be a large driver to that. 
A large part of quality maturity, as you will see if you um, go to that site and, and look at that white paper, um, is the use of uh, predictive analytics and predictive information. And examples of those types of solutions are the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning to manage and mitigate risk and implement technology that will in, uh, empower companies to be more self-regulating. Um, machine learning and AI are not the world is being taken over by robots that you may see in Hollywood films. Um, in short, it's essential tools that can help you and your organization make better, faster decisions with information that is can be overwhelming at times with so many points and data sets and combine them in a way that is more human readable and that is actionable um, within your organization. Um, they are a supplement to human talent and not a replacement. Um, they're tools that will allow you to quickly identify patterns, trends, and historic data that hopefully will allow you to predict, based on pa those past trends, the likelihood of future events. Ask yourself questions such as, what if, technology, what if your technology solutions could predict and put into place an action plan for mitigating and risk uh, the risk associated with if one of your suppliers goes out of business or if one of their um, ingredients that you utilize or components that you utilize in your products is recalled and can no longer be uh, utilized. Do you have plans in place to quickly pivot to supplement that and not uh, um, impact your supply chain and your go-to-market? Um, what is what if the technology could predict an increase in demand of your product and scale up production to meet those needs? We all saw that with a lot of products over uh, the, the pandemic where product demands were increased and some companies could not keep up with that demand. Now, it may seem like we're talking about having a crystal ball to predict the future, but really it's about taking past data and variables that are occurring both inside your organization and out in the world to really help you make better business decisions. So how do we lean into these trends to get ahead of industry, of, of your competitors, and even uh, ahead of demand? Now is the time to be very frank with yourselves as an organization and identify what are the things that we can do to really step up our game and meet the market where it is today, not just to the digitalization need, which I'll speak to in an in in upcoming slide, but really leapfrog that digitalization age into what is now an intelligent age. Um, you may wanna ask yourself some what if questions. What if we could easily and quickly see where we have been and predict where we're going? What if we could provide regulators a very clear, transparent access into our business and how we manage and mitigate risk? Wouldn't that give us a, a certain level of trust as an organization with regulators that we are in complete control and understanding of what's happening in our business? And as I mentioned before, many companies are right now in a, a phase where they're looking at how do we digitalize? And truth be told, that's sort of, you're a little behind the curve already. <laughs> Digitalization is obviously a building block for the connected experience and intelligence, where we really are seeing a, a ramp up of the use of technology that is moving very rapidly in our space to really make better use of intelligent decision-making tools, um, predictive analytics, rule-based automation, uh, configuration, and robust APIs to allow those different dispersed systems that previously were disconnected to now not only be connected, but actually communicate with each other information that is critical. If your organization is only focusing right now on digitalization or integrating solutions, it really needs to ramp that up very quickly. Don't get me wrong, the need for digitalization and connected solutions is a critical building block, but we really are seeing the trends move faster than ever before. Three solutions that I want to speak to today that play into that discussion around where AI and machine learning and, and technology are taking us 
are these three that I, I highlight here. The first one is uh, master controls document and training solutions. And I'll talk a little bit about the value of that. The master control QEM and AQEM solutions that help organizations build and enforce processes for uh, mitigating and managing uh, quality events. And then lastly, all of that data being generated from those previous tools that I mentioned, the insights, the ability to take all of the data that is being collected and driven by those solutions and make intelligent decisions and create uh, visibility into business decisions uh, moving forward. So how do mass control documents and training help with remote inspections? So bringing it back to the first trend that we talked about. Um, effectively automating and managing document control and, and document control processes is critical. Making sure that the right people are doing the right things at the right time. Ensuring that compliance with regulatory requirements are not only uh, documented, but enforced through training and um, uh, competency uh, assessments of that, those uh, best practices and those SOPs and work instructions. Having cloud-based technology that is 21 CFR Part 11 compliant is also very critical. And as I mentioned earlier, increasing the role of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and NLP, which is natural language processing, in content and data management for all of that documentation. So being able to not only have that content be one-dimensional existing in documents, but utilizing that content then to enforce the training and the use of that data. Um, as you can see from this visual here, uh, this is just a very quick flow chart that explains how documents and training can come together. Uh, by having a connected document control and training management solution, you can ensure that all of the critical business areas are well versed and up to date on how they as individuals are contributing to your organization's quality management maturity and processes that support that. As I mentioned earlier, ensuring that the right people are doing the right things at the right time, and that in, es in essence is what risk mitigation is all about. So you may be asking yourself, how does Master Control QEM support quality management maturity? So there's a couple of ways, and I'll talk, point out a couple of things. So autom automating the form launching. So when a quality event happens, being able to know exactly through um, AI and machine learning, what type of quality event needs to be launched, triggered, and followed up on. Establishing dynamic workflows. And what does that mean? Dynamic workflows means that the data that is being input plays a part into the rules, the logics, the paths, the participation that will be automated, and what questions or what actions need to be taken based on those data points. So no more flat processes, a one-size-fits-all process. It's really about taking data in and making intelligent recommendations and decisions based on that data that's being captured, and integration with other activities such as training and CAPA. So for example, as you can see from this flow chart of our quality event management system, you can look at how there's different types of quality events, whether it's a complaint, a deviation, a non-conformance, and being able to utilize tools that are embedded into those quality events to capture what are the risk assessments, the impact assessments, and then take actions and recommend, have the system be intelligent enough to recommend uh, based on business, business rules, um, what actions should be taken. So a quality event could lead to a documentation or a process being modified, which then in turn requires training to be triggered. So having all of those things and all of that logic built into your business processes are one of the critical pivotal areas that we in Mass Control try to focus on. It's no longer this siloed area of quality events and then training and then doc document management or doc control. It's all one big process that's all connected. And Q uh, Mass Control's QEM can help you support that by integrating those processes and ensuring all of those different quality events, complaints, CAPAs, risk assessments, impact assessments, documentation and training are all connected and all feed off of each other. And you can also track what the different impacts and where things originated and then where things were closed out. So what sets Master Control Insights customers apart? 
So our insights mechanisms and tools allow you to monitor and report across quality and manufacturing solutions and modules, bringing together all of the manufacturing activities and the quality of activities all under one umbrella and being able to analyze the data in that and provide recommendations using AI and machine learning capabilities. We also empower users to customize reporting. If you take a look at this, uh, a couple of these screenshots, you'll see that there are reports and analytics around document control, around training and quality events and being able to share that information with both internal and external uh, stakeholders, including regulators that may be wanting to take an assessment of how are, is your health and your quality management maturity. Being able to uh, communicate these types of insights and this information that is being uh, shared within your organization with regulators is critical to building trust and letting them know that you are on top of your game when it comes to the quality management and your activities around quality management within your organization. Well, thank you so much, Patricia. That was some really valuable information that you shared with us today. I hope that all of the people out in the audience were able to garner some good tidbits of, of uh, information that they can take back to your company that can help you improve your quality process. Should you have any additional questions about master control, or if you'd like to request a demo to see a little bit more about what the product can do, you can always visit our website at www.mastercontrol.com. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.